Hello, my name is Guilherme Baeta, uh, and I'm a second year MBA student and a Center for Digital Strategies MBA Fellow at the Tech School of Business at Dartmouth. Today, I'm pleased to welcome Tom Shimlowiski, uh, who is the uh, Vice President of Strategic Sales at iControl Networks. He's joining us today as part of the Tech at Tech event with the topic, The Connected Home. Could you tell us a little bit on uh, what are some of the possibilities of the connected home today? What is available and where is the biggest value? You're starting to see with security as sort of the anchor tenant, uh, people uh, signing up for uh, home security with interactive services. And you know, Comcast, for example, said in the press last year that two thirds of their subscribers are, have never had home security before. So they're going after the 80% of the market that never had home security. And so, uh, and, and that's because it's a cloud-based service. And I like to say you, you buy it for one reason, but you fall in love with it for five reasons that you never imagined. So in, in my case, I have two little kids. When I'm traveling like today, I can go on my smartphone and watch my kids eat breakfast. And to me, it's like having my own personal TV station into my home. And that isn't why I got it, but it's actually one of the reasons I love it. Or I can see when my wife got home from bringing home the kids from work because it's all real time in the cloud. A door's opened, that goes up, and I say, oh, they're home, et cetera. So uh, I think it's just, it's exploding. There's going to be a lot of opportunity, and you're going to see a lot of micro interest for different things. Somebody who's single who has a dog, you'd be surprised. I mean, people love to see what their pet's doing while they're at work. You know, that's a, a form of the connected home. What do you see are some of the next steps? So um, what can we uh, anticipate in the next five or 10 years uh, in terms of new applications uh, for the connected home or for the broadband home? You're seeing a lot of point solutions in the marketplace today. It's just a natural evolution, in my opinion. And so, you might say, oh, well, my on-ramp to the connected home might be uh, a camera or a thermostat or a lighting solution. Um, once you get interested in it, the second, you know, while that may have been your on-ramp, then you're going to get something else. Like, oh, I started with a thermostat, now I have a camera. I started with this, I want lights. And, and you don't want 16 different apps on your phone to do it. So you're, the market is becoming aware that these things need to work together. And so what you want to do is say, hey, I am now on vacation, so turn my thermostat down, make my lights go on and off so it looks like I'm home. If uh, a motion or a door opens, send me a text so I know, or alarm. Um, all, all those things are, are what you're going to have. So I think what's happening is the point solutions are showing the value, but the, cu the customers are getting educated. These should all work together. What do we need to do in order to, in order to have uh, all those different applications and devices working together? Do we need uh, additional standards that are not available today, or do we just need the developers to have that into consideration? What, what is needed? Well, standards always help. I, I think there, um, there's some physics involved, right? They're different standards. You know, the, the, the range and, uh, for Bluetooth LE versus ZigBee or Z-Wave are different there's, they're, they're versus Wi-Fi. So those are all radio frequency protocols in the home, each with different sweet spots of when you want to use them. So to say, oh, which one's going to win is I think um, it's hard to say, or, or maybe they all win. I, I, I used to work at Rackspace, um, and I'd say, well, Rackspace has, you know, any infrastructure partner has a Microsoft and a Linux data center. So it's, it's, people think, oh, it's a Betamax versus VHS. And I'm like, well, not necessarily. It could be that there could be two winners and you, you could choose. Obviously, in this cloud-based world, I think you're going to see more and more cloud-to-cloud cloud -cloud integrations, um, <clears throat> some facilitated by standards, uh, some facilitated by, you know, customers wanting, uh, you know, this solution and this solution to work together. Mm -hmm. uh, so looking at what iControl has done, um, does the fact that you, are, you have a cloud-based solution or that you can facilitate and make it easy to install and, and implement, uh, do any of those things help in terms of adopting the solution? What are some of the, some of the factors that drive uh, adoption? I always like to look at um, from the consumer's perspective in, you know, what's their experience. So, so a key thing is the user experience, right? You know, we're, you're seeing, you know, Apple certainly raised the bar in my working lifetime on that, you know. Uh, uh, you know, if, if customers can, it just sort of works, right? I, so first of all, it's making a, a beautiful user experience where they can do things, like set up their own rules. But in an ideal world, the, the, it's the software and the system 
works automatically or automagically, right? You know, it's it sort of like the other day, you know, Google Now said, it's time for you to leave for the airport. It knew that I had a flight. It knew the traffic patterns. So that's what the connected home, you know, needs to become, where people just say, oh, I walked, you know, I walked into my home. I'm now on my home Wi-Fi network. My user, you know, my, my app knows that. It did things like turned on my TV to, to a certain, you know, it knows it's me, so it puts it on Sports Center versus my wife. It may put it on, you know, some different channel, uh, and then also changes my my voicemail forwarding, turns on lights, changes the thermostat, you know, unlocks the door based on geolocation services. All those things are actually happening today, but you, you just have to squint and look out a few years and say, okay, well, that's what the consumer, that's what's going to drive mass mar market adoption. Looking at the different applications that are available. Uh, such as unlocking the doors at right. home or uh, viewing video from uh, what's happening on at home with your kids. Uh, that, of course, brings some concerns in terms of security and privacy. Uh, should the public be concerned about that? I think consumers, subscribers absolutely should be concerned about that, and they are concerned about that. Uh, that is a place where standards can, can help. You know, one of our platforms built on the Zigbee home automation standard that's uh, it's an open alliance and they are obviously working a lot on you know all those devices door locks and et cetera uh, can't be hackable et cetera you know we have a bit of an advantage I control because we started this you know, our anchor tenant was home security that was a sort of I like to say a home automation use case built it, wrapped around a home security business case so Obviously, when you're in home security, everything's going to be double and triple checked. So we do uh, security audits of all of our software. Our customers, who are big you know, service providers, they, they have teams that make sure everything's locked down, encrypted, uh, you know, only subscribers can see their videos and pictures. So I, I feel very confident that, that that's handled in, in our solution. And uh, Tom, for the viewers that are interested in learning more about the topic, uh, who, who would you recommend following? <laughs> what are some of the thought leaders or... Uh, or um, even blogs online uh, that you look up for information and that you use to, to stay updated about technology. Yeah, it's fine. I think I personally rely a lot on Parks Research and uh, Strategy Analytics. They, they've been covering this space pretty well uh, and, and have some interesting data that they offer up even publicly in webinars. And also GigaOM Giga has, has some, good, uh, some good blog posts on it and TechCrunch as well. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Um, Tom, on behalf of the Center for Digital Strategies uh, at Tech, I would like to thank you again. And um, uh, thank you for speaking today. I'm sure our viewers really enjoyed uh, your insights and thoughts. Uh, this is Guy Bayerta uh, for the Center for Digital Strategies. Thanks for having me.